You know, power supplies are like opinions. Everybody's got one. Something else everybody has. Oh wait, no. Those are in the comments. Sometimes those are in the comments. Seasonic. Seasonic makes power supplies. This is a prime titanium, 80 plus titanium. I think this is the only 80 plus titanium power supply that I've taken a look at. 80 plus titanium is an efficiency rating. So <laughs> it means that it's super efficient at about 50% load, give or take. It's industry leading or market leading, I should say, in terms of how efficient it is uh, with using power. And the more efficient a power supply is, uh, at doing power supply conversion, converting power from you know electrical outlet voltage into voltage a computer can use, the less heat it produces. Like it's, it's, it's really talking about waste heat. Now this is a thousand watt power supply. I think it's gonna be appropriate for up to three graphics cards or up to three really power hungry devices. Maybe you're getting into machine learning or something like that. Well, I mean, maybe cryptocurrency, but I think, I mean, you could do cryptocurrency with this power supply, but I think the cryptocurrency monitors are more concerned with the cheapest power supply per watt and so physically larger non-ATX power supplies typically honestly are what miners are going to buy miners or not unless you're just mining on the side or you know mining is a hobby in a normal computer you're probably going to get you know a power supply that looks like it's from the 1980s because it's basically a custom job in mining now machine learning you know a corporate workstation something like that with a lot of power hungry devices this is more appropriate now the cable breakdown with this kit is actually pretty interesting the power supply uh, has two eight pin cpu power connectors which is great for modern motherboards and overclocking and that kind of thing but it also has eight uh, six plus two pin pci express power connectors but the cable breakdown they give you is really interesting so there are four six plus two pin cables that are just one connector. So you've got four dedicated connectors. And then you've got uh, two cables that have a shared six pin connections. And so you could run, you know, uh, four independent connections to four different graphics cards. And then you've got two cables that have shared two PCI Express six plus two connectors so that you could run those to an additional four graphics cards. So the PCI Express connections look like it's setting up for a four graphics card connection. But most motherboards that are gonna run four graphics cards also have auxiliary power input, an extra PCI Express connection. I don't know if this is an oversight on Seasonic's part, or, uh, you know, more likely, much more likely, um, that, you know, 1,000 watts, especially if you're talking about like four Vegas, 1,000 watts, you know, just it's not enough on the wattage side of things. So I think for 1,000 watts, this is a, an appropriate number of 6 plus 2 connectors. Just bear in mind that, you know, even though if you do the quick mental math, oh, there's enough connections for four graphics cards, uh, not so fast. Your, your motherboard that's going to support four graphics cards is going to need supplemental power as well because those cards can drop to 75 watts through the PCI Express slot. And most motherboards implement those as an extra, you know, six pin connector or an extra six plus two pin connector or there's extra 12 volt connections on the motherboard. In terms of peripheral connections, uh, this power supply has got you covered. You've got several uh, varieties of uh, four pin SATA device connections, both the right angle and the straight through, which is great. Uh, it's mostly the right angle connections, so that you can't like pack drives in, but you do have one that's straight through. There's also some, some shorter SATA uh, peripheral cables so that if you just have a couple of SATA uh, devices you don't have to run the you know the really you know how it's you get the really ridiculous cable that's like i just have one ssd but you've got this huge unwieldy trunk of cable yeah they give you a shorter cable that's only got two connections so it's nice and neat for cable management and that sort of thing it also has molex connections and there's also molex to sata so that you can break out and use you know molex for fan power or whatever um, and, and, and then run your SATA devices through a Molex adapter if you don't need the 3.3 volts on your SATA connection. So all in all, it's a pretty smart, pretty nifty uh, set of choices that you have as far as cables go. Now, it's, it, it is a fully modular power supply, so any cables that you're not using, you don't have to plug into the power supply and have you know cable bloat inside your machine. Uh, half the weight of this box is the cables that it come with. They're all flat. They're all, you know, jet black cables. So you could use modded cables or something like that if you wanted. But I like that these are nice out of the way, 
just basic black cables, no nonsense, they get it done. So in the box, we've got a nice Seasonic Ziploc bag with uh, Velcro connectors. We've also got uh, zip ties, screws, uh, stickers. You get the nice Seasonic stickers. So we've got a We Support Gamers. It's like enter to win automatically a Steam gift card, share your personal experience with Steam, this kind of thing. This is really important. I mean, most people don't realize, but Seasonic goes back to 1975. The first computer that I ever owned, which was a computer from the 1980s, had a Seasonic power supply. It was an IBM computer, and IBM was insane at the time. Like, IBM just had these ridiculous manufacturing requirements, and so you can bet that if IBM picked Seasonic, it was not because they were the least expensive, it was because they would survive the nuclear holocaust. That's just how IBM operated in the 1980s. And so the very first power supply that I had <laughs> was a Seasonic power supply, and it lasted forever, and it lasted through tons of abuse. And so I've sort of followed Seasonic. I mean, uh, you know, when I was, some of the first very expensive machines that I built for myself was using Seasonic and PC power and cooling. And PC power and cooling, I think, has, has basically gone away at this point. I mean, they were one of the first people to, to have a website, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't ordered a PC power supply, a PC power and cooling power supply in like 10 years. Meanwhile, you know, about every week, another Seasonic power supply is coming in. I noticed this, that Seasonic's also stepped up their marketing, their U.S. marketing, because historically they were a Taiwanese company, and they did really well because, you know, everybody wanted to use a Seasonic power supply because you didn't have to worry about it destroying anything. You know, when IBM was building those five thousand dollar computers, my computer was not. It was it was from the '80s, but it, it was not a five thousand dollar computer. But when IBM was building those five thousand dollar computers with Seasonic power supplies, IBM was you know it's like we're putting thousands of dollars into the computer. We don't want the power supply to destroy anything. And so I've certainly uh, the the worst uh, problem that I ever saw was uh, a power supply died, and it was not because of lightning or anything like that. It's just the power supply had a catastrophic failure. And this was in the Pentium 4 days. The power supply had a catastrophic failure. There was uh, a video card in the machine. There's a Voodoo 2. Uh, so, you know, that dates the machine, although it was kind of older then. Uh, a sound card. You know, it was uh, like two or three sticks of memory. Um, and, the, you know, like a slot processor. The power supply killed everything except one of the sticks of RAM. Just one. Some of the other ones died and the CPU, like that is the only thing that survived from the system. Hard drive, destroyed. Floppy drive, optical drives, destroyed. Add-in cards, destroyed. That is how important it is to get a good power supply. Well, anyway, enough rambling. 12-year warranty. So yeah, that was the lead up for the 12-year warranty. Seasonic, I mean, man, there's just 80 plus titanium. They were the first people to come up with 80 plus bronze. I mean, most people, uh, most people don't realize that, but like when the 80 plus standards came about and manufacturers were like, we're never gonna, we're never gonna be that environmentally friendly. Seasonic was like, we'll take up the challenge and it'll be great. And so, and they did, and the rest is history. That's a nice heavy thousand watt power supply. Got a nice cloth bag for our modular cables. Oh, you can really hear the plastic inside there. And then we've got an even nicer cloth bag for our power supply. All right. That's just, that's just nuts. Okay, this is cool. It has a diagram for the correct way to wire in your graphics card. So I mentioned that some of the PCI Express pay, uh, power cables are split. This is, saying, yeah, on those split cables, uh, don't plug both ends of the split into the same graphics card. Those are meant to go to different graphics cards, just so you know. Also included in the bag is this dummy plug, which appears to be wired to um, turn the power supply on uh, all the time. So you could plug the motherboard connector in here. There's a wire on the motherboard connector that always turns the power supply on. That looks to me what this jumper pin is. So when you plug the uh, power supply into this plug, the power supply would come on. I guess that might be useful for like a mining rig or something like that. So that's handy that they included that. There's something very important and very special that I want to call attention to in power supplies. And it's also something that you should look for in sleeved cables. If you're paying really close attention, you know, we've got our standard 20 plus 4 pin motherboard power connector on this, on this side. And if you look very carefully, you can see that some of the wires that are going into this connector have uh, multiple, uh, some of the plugs, there are multiple wires going into each plug. 
And the reason for that is voltage monitoring, or monitoring the voltage delivered right here. You see, the amount of current that's flowing through this wire is gonna affect the voltage that's being delivered to the motherboard. So yeah, it's 12 volts, but if there's a huge load on one of the 12 volt pins from this particular cable, it is going to um, cause a voltage drop. The voltage is going to drop because of the load on the wire. If you look at the connector on this end, you can see that there are no wires that are doubled up. This is the end that goes into the power supply. It's also why these are not reversible. So there are actually more pins on this end than there are on this end, and the reason is monitoring that voltage. And so the power supply will actually dynamically adjust based on load, based on the electro-resistivity of the wire. I mean, depending on how you've got it bent and how good the connection is to the machine, there's just no way to do it in the power supply properly, at least not to my knowledge. And so uh, the reason that you have those extra wires is to um, tell the system, hey, we're only delivering 11.9 or 11.7 volts or whatever at the motherboard. We need to boost the 12 volt voltage rail inside the power supply a little bit to compensate for the loss in the, in the connector or the loss in the wire or, or whatever, which is a really awesome feature. But that brings me to sleeved cables and modded cables. When you're doing modded cables with a power supply like this, you wanna be sure that you've gotten a, you know, a mod kit that has the manufacturer's blessing. It is so important that you get a mod kit that includes those extra wires because one of the wires is delivering the voltage to the connector and the other one is monitoring the voltage delivered to the connector. And so I can see that our motherboard connector is set up that way, which is great. Our PCI Express um, power connections uh, are not set up that way. So I think that the PCI Express power connections, and that's pretty normal because it's like, oh, you're on your own for you know, the load uh, delivered from GPUs. It's just not as important. It's not as critical as what's going into the motherboard at the 24 pin power cable because the 24 pin power cable for the motherboard is the most important uh, power delivery thing in the, in the system. So I also wanna take a moment to really thank Seasonic because you know most of the systems that I've built the last little bit, they have not used a lot of two and a half inch or three and a half inch devices or devices that really use the uh, SATA or Molex power. I mean, there might be like a fan controller or something like that that uses external power, but these, these connections are great. So this is directed to the power supply, and then you've got two SATA connections. This is awesome because this is a lot easier to cable manage than this, especially if you're using just one single device. So I really love that there is a relatively small number of devices that come with this. They also provide a Molex to SATA adapter. So you get you know your five and 12 volt Molex connector and then you output for your, your SATA connections. This is great for water pumps and stuff like that because you can use, again, the relatively modest two Molex connector thing into the power supply, basically be good to go. One really easy way to know if you're dealing with a good power supply is how much does it weigh? And now that the secret's out on that, we're gonna get power supplies with lead bricks in it, right? This power supply is substantial. It weighs quite a bit. You can look in, in there and see that there's quite a lot of, uh, well, quite a lot of stuff in there. It's, it's pretty awesome. There is a single switch on the back, hybrid fan on and off. If you turn on hybrid fan, the hybrid fan control basically means that do you want your power supply fan to stop completely? So if you want a totally silent system, you can run this thing uh, completely silent. The cutoff seems to be around 400, 450 watts on the kilowatt. Uh, the power, the, the fan, it's kind of odd. The, the fan looks like it wants to kick on around 450 watts, but it doesn't always kick on around 450 watts. It did not get hot under load, so that's something to consider. Um, I've actually been using another one of these that we picked up from Micro Center a couple of weeks ago, so for the unboxing, we're just like, ah, let's unbox it and see what happens. So it's a really, they've made some really interesting choices um, with this power supply. I do like the button at the back for controlling that. I know that with some other power supplies, you can do that through USB, which is neat. It's, it's, it's nice to be able to get, you know, direct readouts and direct features of the stuff that's going on with your, with your power supply. But I do also like to see that Seasonic is, is uh, you know, sort of coming out from the OEM market. I mean, there were a lot of, of people in the world that were making power supplies you know, and putting their sticker on it, uh, but it still basically came from Seasonic. Now, Seasonic still OEMs power supplies for a huge number of people, and those people have their own specs. Maybe they'll specify different capacitors or they'll, they'll specify different internal components. But around 2005, 2006, I think, Seasonic incorporated in the US 
it's a wholly owned subsidiary um, from Seasonic in, in Taiwan uh, to sell power supplies directly, which has served me well over the years. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> they reached out and they were like, hey, do you, you know, do you know anything about Seasonic? And it's like, oh my gosh, Seasonic, I like a little bit of a fanboy. So take that, you know, take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Now, in terms of things that they could do uh, to improve the power supply, you know, the market is really crazy about RGB. I do not care about RGB. I just want it to run well. I want a power supply that I can put in my system and forget about. And historically, Seasonic has been that for me, uh, you know, since decades ago. Seasonic has been doing power supplies since 1975, so that should tell you something. So all of the things that are relevant to me, it ticks all the boxes. I still feel like maybe they missed an opportunity because a lot of people like the ability to monitor their power supply and control it through like a USB type connection. Uh, maybe there would be an option to add a connector, like a 50-50 RGB connector and controller, like actually in the power supply. Not for RGB lighting inside the system, although that would be pretty cool, but to actually use it for ambient lighting for the rest of your room. I mean, uh, the places where I've seen RGB done well and thought that actually looks pretty good has been where the RGB has, is part of the lighting for the room. So maybe, you know, when you're playing a game, you don't want to turn out the lights completely because of eye strain, but you could turn off the room lights and have RGB under your desk and, you know, behind your monitor and things like that. Uh, SteelSeries and, and MSI showed off the RGB controller where you could, con could control your room lighting based on uh, the character, like what was happening to the character in game. We looked at that at Computex. And so maybe something like that tied in with the power supply so that the power supply can supply a lot of current to those RGB devices makes more sense. I don't know. I don't know what, that, what kind of cost that would add to the power supply. Certainly there are people like me that would not be interested in paying extra for those features, but the market seems to be super interested in RGB. So all in all, this power supply, A+. I think that Seasonic has got to be a little bit careful here because I don't think they should rest on their laurels, especially if they're looking into move into the DIY gaming market because gamers drive a lot of that and gamers are apparently very interested in RGB. RGB power supply, is it a thing? I mean, it's already kind of a thing in some places, but I feel like that Seasonic could use it for room lighting and maybe that would, that would differentiate themselves. Also, I really like the button. I mean, you can control it with the button, hybrid fan on or off. Do you really need any, anything more complicated than that? Maybe not, but you know, USB control might be nice too. If you pick up one of these or you have an opinion about Seasonic, let us know in the comments at Level 1 Text. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out and I'll see you there.